My dear senior six students, I welcome you all at Light Academy Secondary School e-learning platform. My name is Teacher Sevira Jimmy. I salute you all. I'm going to take you through Senior 6 Mathematics Paper 2 and our topic today is Roots of the Equations of the Form Fx equal to 0. If x0 is a root to the equation fx equal to 0, then fx0 is equal to 0. But if this x0 is the root to the equation, when you get the x0 value and you substitute in the function, the answer must be equal to 0. Locating the roots, if a root to the equation fx equal to 0 lies between alpha and beta, then f alpha times f beta must be less than 0. That if we know that our root lies between alpha and beta, that means when you get the functional values, that one of alpha and that one of beta, the two, the product of the two functional values must be giving you a value which is less than 0, that is, which is negative. In other words, if f of alpha is less than 0, that is, if it's negative, then f of beta must be greater than 0, that is, it should be positive, such that when you multiply a negative value times a positive value, the answer must be negative. That's why we do claim that the product of f alpha times f beta is less than 0. Or, if f beta is less than 0, then f alpha must be greater than 0, that is, if f beta is a negative value, then f alpha should be a positive value such that we remain with our principle that the product of the two must give us a negative value example one show that the root to the equation 2x squared plus x minus 6 equal to 0 lies between 1 and 2 hence use linear interpolation to find an initial approximation to the root our solution if the root to the equation fx equal to 0 lies between alpha and beta, then f alpha times f beta must be less than 0. That is our rule. fx is equal to 2x squared plus x minus 6. That means we get the functional values. f of 1 is equal to 2 into 1 squared plus 1 minus 6. When you substitute this in the calculator correctly, the answer will be negative 3. Then we get the functional value of 2. f of 2 is equal to 2 into 2 squared plus 2 minus 6. Substitute that in the calculator very well, the answer will be 4. Since f of 1 times f of 2 is equal to an answer which is less than 0, then a root lies between 1 and 2. In simple terms, we've seen this one negative, this one positive. That means the product will be a negative value. And that will be a justification that the root lies between 1 and 2. Now, we are to use linear interpolation to get that initial approximation. Now, I have my table x, then f of x. When x is 1, a function value, we calculated it as negative 3. And then our root, our initial approximation x0, the function value will be 0. Then x2, the function value is 4. Using linear interpolation, we are just going to equate gradients. That is, x0 minus 1 over 0 minus minus 3 is equal to 2 minus 1 over 4 minus minus 3. Solve that very well, you come up with 1.43. We note, usually the root of the equation will be given to lie between the two known values, and it will be required from you to show that the root exists between those two values. To do that, we obtain the values of a function at those given x values. And to investigate the sign change, if fx is negative for one value of x and fx is positive for other value of x then we conclude that the root exists 
in between those two given values. We've seen that if one functional value is negative and another functional value is positive, that means the product of the two will be giving you an answer which is less than zero, in simple terms, which is negative. And that will be a justification that the root exists in between those two given x values. Now, here we have a demonstration on the graph. Now, in case this is this is my x1 and having a functional value which is a negative value, you remember all the f all the values below the x-axis this side on y-axis they are always negative. And if this x2 is our second x value and its function value is on the positive side, that means our root will exist in between x1 and x2 because x1 is giving a negative functional value and x2 is giving a positive x value and that's why we are seeing even our curve crossing x-axis. Remember we said we talk of a root when the function value is zero. That means our root will be at this point. Remarks. If we are locating roots to the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero or any quadratic polynomial of order higher than two, we make sure that the coefficient of the highest power is one and go ahead to find the biggest coefficient in the resulting polynomial and denote it by k. Then all the roots to the equation lies in the range plus or minus k magnitude plus one. Remember, we are saying then all the roots to the equation lies in the range plus or minus k magnitude plus one. Why are we saying so? Remember, whenever you solve a quadratic equation, we expect at least two roots. And then if we are to talk of a quadratic polynomial of a degree higher than two, in case it's of degree three, we expect three roots. In case it's of degree four, we expect four roots. That's why, that's why we, here we are saying all the roots of the equation will lie in the range plus or minus k magnitude plus 1. Let us see our first example. Show that the equation 2x squared plus x minus 6 equal to 0 has two roots and locate them. Our solution. We have our, our quadratic equation 2x squared plus x minus 6 equal to 0. And then we said if we are to locate or to get the range we need to first ensure that that one of the highest degree is having coefficient 1. That's why here I'm starting by saying divide through by 2. When you divide through by 2, we are going to come up with x squared plus x over 2 minus 3 equal to 0. Now, when you observe this, this one is having a coefficient 1 here. This one is having a coefficient 1 over 2. This one is having a coefficient negative 3. Now, of the three coefficients, 1 negative a half sorry beg your pardon a half negative three which one is the highest the highest is negative three we said even if it's negative we take it to be the highest because we are going to get its magnitude that's why here we are seeing magnitude of k is three that means three is our biggest coefficient highest coefficient therefore the root of the equation lies in the range equal to plus or minus k magnitude plus one which is equal to plus or minus minus 3 plus 1 plus or minus 4. Hence, the range is from negative 4 less or equal to x less or equal to 4. Now, let us draw our table. We shall have x values, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then get the corresponding functional values. That is the y. When you substitute in negative 4 in our function, we shall come up with 22. Substitute in negative 3, we shall come up with 9. Substitute in negative 2, you come up with 0. Substitute in negative 1, you come up with negative 5. Substitute in 0, you come up with negative 6. Substitute in 1, you come up with negative 3. Substitute in 2, you come up with 4. Substitute in 3, you come up with 15. Substitute in 4, you come up with 30. Now, even if you don't include this row, and this row and finally that row the two rows are enough that one of x and that one of the function value is y there the two roots exist between one and two why one and two one and two because here we are seeing a same change from negative to positive that means one root exists in between that interval and the second one is in between negative two 
and negative 1. Why? Also here we are seeing a sign change. Now we are done with our question. Now let me give you some means to put down my exercise. Let me hope you're done with those two numbers. Let us advance to more two numbers. Let me hope you've completed putting down my four numbers. Now please spare time and try out those numbers and then see whether you've understood our presentation. But now before I leave this, maybe let me give a hint on this number, number three. Show that the equation x squared minus 2x minus 2 equal to 0 has a root between 2 and 3. By drawing two graphs, locate the roots of the equation correct to one decimal place. Now here, what we are going to do, the first part, all of you can answer it, just showing that the root exists in between one and two. Maybe my emphasis will be on the second part. By drawing two graphs, locate the roots to the equation, correct to one decimal place. Now what we are supposed to do, now here, I'll take these two x and these two on the other side where there is, there is a zero. Now my equation becomes x squared is equal to two x plus 2. That means what is on the left becomes my first curve. Therefore, I say y is equal to x. And what is on the left becomes my second curve. Therefore, that will be y is equal to 2x plus 2. Now, I'll draw a table for y equal to 2x. But that table must have at least two points. Now, I'll have 2, 2.5 and 3. Then, come up with the corresponding y values. And then draw another table having also at least two points. That is 2, 2.5 and 3. And then that will be for y is equal to x plus 2. Then after having those two tables, I'll put them on the same Cartesian plane. Now you realize that those two curves will intersect somewhere. After intersecting, you read the x value. That will be our root of the equation. And you read it to one decimal place. Okay, now let us advance and see another small chapter that is interval bisection. In this method, the root is known to lie between two given values, that is alpha and beta. The interval alpha beta is reduced progressively by obtaining the second value, which is alpha plus beta over 2, which then becomes one bound. This procedure is repeated until the difference between the two boundaries is near zero. Let us see our first example. Show that the root alpha show that a root alpha of the equation a of x minus 3x plus 0 0.2 equal to 0 lies between 1.32 and 1.36. Then find the value of alpha correct to two decimal places by a repeated interval by section. Our solution f of x is equal to e of x minus 3x plus 0 0.2. Now we get a functional value of 1.32, which is equal to e of 1.32 minus 3 into 1.32 plus 0 0.2. You solve that, you come up with negative 0 0.017. Then get also a functional value of 1.36, which is equal to e of 1.36 minus 3 into 1.36 plus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.016. This is a positive value, this is a negative value. And we said in case one value is negative and another value is positive, that means the product of the two will be negative. That will be a justification that the root lies between 1.32 and 1.36. Now the second part, we are supposed to use interval bisection to get the root. That means I'll start by adding the two. 
1.32 plus 1.36 over 2, which is equal to 1.34. Now, after getting 1.34, this is becoming our one of our boundaries. Now, we don't know, is it the upper boundary or the lower boundary? Now, we can only tell that it's the upper or the lower after substituting this in our function and then get its functional value. I'll say f of 1.34 is equal to e of 1.34 minus 3 into 1.34 plus 0 0.2. Now, we are getting negative 0 0.01. Now, that becomes our lower bound. That's why here I'm saying one point, our root lies between 1.34 and 1.36. Now, before we continue, we need to first check, have we reached the answer? Can we take 1.34 to be our answer? Now, we need to check the difference between this and this. What's the difference between this and this magnitude? It will be 0 0.03, 0 0.020. This one is still bigger than 0 0.005. Five, which is our error. Remember, we are told to put our answer to two decimal places. And if our answer is going to be to two decimal places, our error is 0 0.05. And the answer we've got, the difference we've got is still bigger than the error. We need to continue. Now we add those two values, 1.34 plus 1.36 over 2, which is 1.35. Then after getting 1.35, we get the function value to tell whether it's the lower bound or the upper bound. F of 1.35 is equal to E of 1.35 minus 3 into 1.35 plus 0 0.2, which is equal to 0 0.007. This is a positive value. That means it's the upper bound. That's why here I'm claiming that our root lies between 1.34 and that function value we've just used, that x value we've just used to get that function value, 1.35. Now, before so we continue, we need to first check, have we reached the answer by subtracting this and this? 1.350 minus 1.340. Now, you may ask yourself, why am I writing this to three decimal places when we are here we are having two decimal places? I'm writing it to three decimal places simply because our error is having three decimal places. Then when you subtract, you come up with 0 0.010. Still, it's still bigger than the error. We need to continue. Then we add 1.34 plus 1.35 divided by 2 is equal to 1.345. Now, we substitute this in our function to see the function value, which is E of 1.345 minus 3 into 1.345 plus 0 0.2, which is a positive value. Being a positive value, that means <coughs> is the, uh, this 1.345 is the upper bound. That means our root lies between 1.34 and 1.35. We need also to first check, have we reached our end point? By subtracting, we are getting 0 0.05, which is exactly our error. Let us continue and see. 1.34 plus 1.345 divide by 2 will give us 1.3425. Get the functional value, we are also getting a positive value. That means that value we've used is also our upper bound. Our root lies between 1.34 and 1.3425. When you subtract, you come up with 0 0.0025, which is smaller than our error. That means we've reached that means just go and pick this value and round it off to the required number of decimal places, which is two decimal places, which will take us to 1.34. That will be our answer in that case. Now, exercise. I'm giving you some means to put down that exercise. Let me hope you've completed putting down my exercise. Uh, you've been good listeners. Please try out all those numbers I've given you. We meet in the next presentation. Take care.